First off, Cecilia, thank you for um, letting us do this interview with you. Yeah, thank you. And um, our fans on mayashe.de on Facebook have collected a few questions for you. Um, first of all, they wanted to know since your family has a very high popularity status in Ireland with your father being the former prime minister, your um, brother-in-law, he yep. is uh, with Westlife. He used to be a soccer player. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you, of course, are a very, very popular book author worldwide. So the question would be, with your daughter growing up, where do you see her future? Would you like for her to have a more private life? Or would you like for her to get acquainted with um, the publicity? Oh, goodness. Um, I think I just want her to do whatever it is that makes her happy. Um, it's probably an easier life if you have a private life um, and that's where I was headed. I thought if I write novels I'll just sit in my house quietly, I won't have to leave my house, I'll just write a little story for myself um, and then BAM! <laughs> it was suddenly all over the world and I had to travel um, and I haven't looked back since and I'm really delighted about that opportunity but uh, you just never know where life's going to take you so um, I don't know if she's anything like me she'll be private <laughs> but who knows. Who knows? Yes. <laughs> um, well, we're going to stay with your daughter now. Um, she's two years old. Yep, she's yeah, she's two in December. Two in December. Her name is Robin. Yeah, correct. That's right. Okay. So you've had a lot of bedtime stories so far. Yeah. Uh huh. You do you read out of books or do you make up some stories on on your own? I read out of books. Um, oh, we read all kinds of things. You know, all the old stories like the Gingerbread Man and yeah. Three Little Pigs. Um, but then she loves stories like Dora the Explorer and Peppa Pig and she absolutely adores books and I actually had to stop her from reading so many books because when she was only about six or seven months she was obsessed with turning the pages and wanted to read them all before she went to bed, you know, 30 books before she went to bed so we had to kind of stop. <laughs> but um, I tell her, sto I, there's one story I tell her all the time about a little girl called Robin, who can speak to the robins, the birds. <laughs> so oh, that's, that's the one nice. story I tell her all the time. Okay, that's, well, um, since you started on um, telling her the story about Robin talking to the robins, um, do you ever think about maybe writing a children's book yourself? Do you feel inspired to do that with your daughter? I actually yeah. have. I, yeah. When she was a couple of months old, I, I took a year out from writing novels, but came up with an idea for, for a children's story. And uh, yeah, it's, it's hopefully going to be out soon. I don't know when, but maybe next year or the following year. So it's my first children's story. And oh, I love wow. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that sounds very interesting. Um, staying with the books, um, a lot of fans are probably dying to know if at some point maybe the heroine from P.S. I Love You is going to have a reappearance anytime. Oh, would I write the sequel? Mm -hmm. oh, I've been asked that so much. and. I wouldn't want to take away from the magic of the first novel. I feel like I brought Holly to a place where she feels happy and I don't want to revisit it. Uh, if I was to do anything at all, I think I would do a prequel and that's to, to write about Holly and Jerry when they were together. I think there'd be more interest in that because um, 
but I don't have any story. I mean, I would never say never, but there's nothing in my head right now that makes me want to go back and revisit that story. But well, happy is happy. Uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But um, I think if I was to do it at all, it would be to tell that Holly and Jerry story. That would be the most beautiful story, I yes, think. Yes, it would. And staying with the magic part of your um, stories, you also have a lot of paranormal, uh, supernatural things, as in the transfer of memories mm. and um, also that um, place called There. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That was a nice explanation for my socks. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, what sparks your ideas in that area? I honestly don't know where they come from. I really try so hard to come up with a normal idea. <laughs> and my mind just goes down all these different pathways and starts to say, ask me, it asks itself, well, what if this happened and what if that happened? So, and the same with this new novel then, it's about a woman whose life uh, appears to her, whose <laughs> life asks her to meet with it face to face. And that idea came from, I hadn't heard from a friend in a while, and mm -hmm. I just said to myself, that's okay, life, life needs them right now. Um, and it was just that sentence that sparked off the whole thing. I thought of life as being the separate person to us and someone that needs our attention. Um, and if we were able to see how we treated our lives reflected in another being, then would we treat them like that? So it was that simple one phrase that I said to one myself. One phrase. Yeah. Okay, so do you actually believe in uh, supernatural things? Has anything in that area happened? Or no, is it just I've really sentences that... I've never experienced anything. I, I just like looking at... Um, possible scenarios for, for situations. I think I like to take my characters to a place where they're not comfortable, you know. Mm -hmm. So I take an ordinary character, put them in an extraordinary situation, and that for me is where the excitement in telling a story lies. Um, I mean, every day we're all faced by something overwhelming. I think that's normal, but I just like to, in my novels, exaggerating, exaggerate the overwhel yeah. overwhelming force. Um, a director said to me recently that he'd call my work speculative fiction. I really like that because okay. it's, because it's saying well, taking our character out of an ordinary world and saying well what if this happened to them you know let's examine let's explore and let's have fun with a new idea and that's what I love to do so it's not so much that I believe in everything it's that I it's that I believe it's possible it's possible yeah. yes <laughs> okay yeah. that's a nice way of saying it <laughs> oh yes have you come across books that uh, you've read where afterwards you said, wow, I wish I would have written this. All the time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite novels is The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey okay, Niffenegger. Yeah. I adore that book. Wish that I wrote it. Um, also recently read a book called The Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake by Amy Bender, which yes. I... Did you read that one? I love that one. I it's at home. Oh, I it's wish home, I read nice. that, wrote that one too. And I've just finished one called The Language of Flowers. And, and I started that oh, one. It's beautiful. I wish I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm jealous of all of those authors. <laughs> okay. And um, in retrospective, were there any authors that inspired you for certain novels or inspired you to actually begin writing novels? No, no, not really. But I think reading these kinds of works, the books that I've just mentioned, um, I suppose I find them inspiring and encouraging that they're writing about, they're writing in a style and in a way that I love to write too. And um, so that kind of encourages me. You know, I'm, as you said before, I'm writing about quite unusual circumstances and these books also do that. So it makes me think, well, you know, it's okay. I'm not completely weird. Other authors think like that too. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I read on your blog <coughs> that in August you were uh, visiting in Germany because you were working with uh, ZDF. Yes, that correct? that's right. I'm really Do excited. Do you plan on letting in out any more on that oh, area? I'm, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm working on with, with them on a, a TV show, a completely original idea for yeah. the, the Sunday night slot. Um, and so I have three shows to be filmed next year. Okay. And uh, all with the same characters. Um, I can't say what it's about, no. but um, I'm working on it at the moment and I'm super excited because I know it's a, a huge network and it's a huge slot and it's a popular one. So I'm really honoured and really flattered as a non-German to be to be working in that. So, so you get to work with on the directing area? Or no, I'm writing. You, just, you write? Yeah, yeah, writing and obviously then we'll have a talented writer who translates. Okay. <laughs> but I'll be working on it. Um, but that sounds like a lot of fun. A lot of fun and a lot of... Hard work, but mostly fun, I think. And a lot of yeah. travelling back to Germany again. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Any excuse to come back. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> when you're writing, how do you build up your story? Do you have uh, a moment where you work around it? Do you already know where you're going to be going, or does it just happen along the way? 
Um, it's a bit of both, actually. I always I have points throughout that I that I know that I want to happen. I always know what the ending is going to be. Not exactly the scene, but I know the feeling that I that I want to create, mm -hmm. or I know the place that the character needs to get to, which is very important. And then a lot of it is just putting pen to paper and and letting it flow from place to place. And usually those days are the best. You know that that's the best work yeah. that I write when um, the kind of the spontaneous stuff that I haven't planned. But I'm I'm not totally structured, but I do have places. I do have certain points in the books okay. that I want to hit. And with your daughter, it works out. Do you have certain times, or I do. I am now a nine to f a nine to half five. Okay. I go to an office outside of my home, and I very very structured in that way. I used to write all night before sleep. All you know, I used to work night and day to be honest. Um, but now I I actually stop. <laughs> so it works <laughs> yes. out great for me. It's it's. I, I thought that it, something creative couldn't be done during those yeah. hours. Um, but it actually works, so I've been very focused. <laughs> oh, great. That way we will always be able to have new novels. Yes, I'm going to touch wood, hopefully. Yes, it's worked yes, for please. me so far. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, well, that was uh, the questions that our fans thank had you. asked. And uh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so I much. I hope you enjoy Cologne. I and absolutely will, yes. Thank you very and, much. And uh, now let's go on down. The fans are waiting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>